Let me read to you Mark chapter 5, verse 36. This is the English Standard Version. But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the ruler of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. Jesus was headed to Jairus' house to minister healing to his daughter. But before they could reach the place, news came that the little girl had died. It seemed that all hope was lost. But Jesus did not say to Jairus, I'm so sorry. Please convey my condolences to your family. I tried my best, but unfortunately, we just didn't make it. I guess it wasn't God's will. No. Instead, he said but five words. Do not be afraid. Only believe. Now, if Jesus was here in the flesh... Of course, he's with us in the spirit always. But if he was with us in the flesh, would he tell you something different than what he told Jairus that day? He's the same yesterday, today, and forever, the Bible says in Hebrews 13.8. So if you are facing an impossible situation, I'm sure that Jesus would say the same thing to you, do not fear, only believe. Now, that tells me something. Faith and fear are opposites. You know, you cannot sit down and stand up at the same time. You cannot be inside and outside simultaneously, and you cannot be in faith and in fear at the same time. When you are fearful, you are not faithful. Faith is being convinced that what you desire is going to happen. Fear is also being convinced that what you dread, what you do not desire, is going to happen. Both faith and fear create an expectation. When you are in faith, you expect something good to happen to you. But when you are in fear, you expect something bad. Fear is an anticipation of evil. When fear grips a man's heart, he begins to visualize the worst. In other words, he sees himself failing. He rehearses it in his mind. He imagines misery. And the stronger the fear, the clearer the picture in his soul becomes. And when disaster befalls a fearful man, he's not surprised. In fact, sometimes he's a little proud. He'll say, see, I told you. I told you that would happen. I knew it would happen. He saw it coming. He anticipated it. And mentally he prepared for it. After Job's children died and all of his possessions were destroyed, Job said in Job chapter 3, verse 25 in the New King James Version, For the thing I greatly feared has come upon me, and what I dreaded has happened to me. Fear always looks to the future. You're not afraid of the past, what has already happened but of things yet to come. Often when people are unsure of the future, they respond with fear. In other words, for many people, even many Christians, their natural inclination 
is always fear. They respond to the unknown, not with faith, but with fear. Where's Billy? He was supposed to be here. What happened to him? He's more than an hour late. Oh, maybe he, he was in an accident. Maybe he's been killed. Something bad has happened to him. Well, maybe something good happened to him. Maybe he's not here because someone gave him a new car and he's at the dealership picking it up right now. Maybe something good happened to him. But people have a tendency, the natural inclination is to always respond with fear. Fear, my friends, is more than an emotion or a feeling of uneasiness. It's more than that. Fear is a spiritual force that causes bad things to come to pass in your life. Fear is like a mishap magnet. It draws, it attracts misfortune to your life. You know, it's interesting. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5, 2 Timothy 1, verse 5, the apostle Paul said something to Timothy. Timothy at this time was a young man in the ministry serving God, and he said this, I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I am sure dwells in you as well. We need to pass on to our children a spirit of faith, not a spirit of fear. Children who grow up in a fearful home are handicapped in life. They are frozen with paralysis. They are hesitant to take any risks, and they are never truly free. Let us leave behind us a legacy of faith and not fear for the coming generations. Faith is confidence in God's ability to fulfill his promise. Fear is confidence in the enemy's ability to thwart, to stop the purpose of God. Fear Rather, fear is perverted faith. Fear is really faith in the devil. So that means it's not okay for a child of God to be living in fear. Faith produces an expectation of something good. Faith is always accompanied by joy. And peace. In Romans chapter 15, verse 13, we read, May the God of hope, and thank God he is the God of hope, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. The International Standard Version says, As you believe. In other words, people who believe God are happy and content. Now, fear is always accompanied by distress and anguish. Friends, you are never happy and fearful at the same time. Let me say that again. You are never happy, never joyful, and full of fear at the same time. So now you know why many Christians are always unhappy. They're living in fear. There is no such thing as a restless faith. For Hebrews chapter 4 verse 3 says, "For we who have believed enter that rest." There is a rest. There is a quiet and stillness of heart. There is a tranquility. There is a peace that is only found for those who believe God's word. 
There is no such thing as a frustrated faith. Amen. Now, the person who believes God begins to visualize the answer to his prayers. He sees it becoming a reality in his mind before he sees it with his eyes. He has a strong hope. And Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 in the easy to read version says this. Faith is what makes real the things we hope for. Faith is what makes real the things we hope for. In other words, our dreams will never become a reality unless we first believe. So Jesus said that day, do not fear, only believe. And he's saying the same thing today as well. Now, it could be argued, it could be argued that, well, all men believe something. But Jesus, of course, is talking about faith in God. Second Chronicles, in the Old Testament, Second Chronicles 20 and verse 20 says this, Believe in the Lord your God, and you will be established. Believe his prophets, and you will succeed, or you will prosper. So if you want to be blessed, if you want victory, if you want success in life from God, you need to trust the Lord, and you need to believe his word. Jesus said again, do not fear, only believe. That tells me that faith and fear are choices. Jesus would not tell Jairus to do something he could not do. A teacher may say to her student, Billy, sit down. But she won't say, Billy, fly around the classroom. Billy can't do that. <laughs> if Jesus said, do not fear, only believe, that means you can choose faith over fear, that you, you don't have to be afraid. You can choose to believe God regardless of how you feel or what you see. Faith is not a feeling. It's a decision. Feelings may follow your faith, but your faith will never follow your feelings. Notice again, do not fear, only believe. Notice that only believe. Jesus told Jairus one thing not to do and one thing to do. No fear, only faith. Notice Jesus did not say to him, I want you to pray all night long. Go on a two-week fast you and your wife do a Jericho march around the house. Call all of the members of the synagogue and have them pray all night long. He didn't say anything like that. He just said, only believe. I think the answer is so simple that it seems ludicrous to our natural minds. We just reject it. That can't be true. But it is the word of God, and it is the best advice we could ever give anyone in a difficult situation. Only believe. You see, you are not going to heal your loved ones because you're not the healer. You're not the provider. He is. You're not the protector. He is. Unless the Lord keeps the city, the watchman stays awake in vain, the Bible says. You're not the mountain mover. You're not the miracle worker. And you're not the Savior. He is. He's all those things. He will do what he promised. He will fulfill his word to you. All he is asking you to do is to believe. 
My friends, over the past 10 weeks or so, we have seen more than the spread of a virus around the world. We have witnessed a pandemic of fear. And I'm not trying to be sarcastic, but I must say this. There are some Christians I sincerely hope never catch this Chinese virus because they don't have a molecule of faith. Are you listening to me? Smith Wigglesworth once said, the great English preacher Smith Wigglesworth said, if you wait until you need faith to get it, you're too late. Now, some people only come to church in a crisis. Some people only, you know, read the Bible when they're in a fix. But we need to live by faith, and life is more than a crisis. Amen? Now, some people will protest, but we need to use wisdom. Well, yes, that's true, but what kind of wisdom? James chapter 3, verse 15 says, There is a kind of wisdom that does not come from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. Friends, what some people call wisdom is actually nothing more than fear. Some folks would dismiss what I'm saying to you today as being unrealistic. They they disregard it. They turn away and they say, ah, don't listen to that. That's just a lot of religious bravado. So let me ask you a question now. Is your fear even factual? I said, is your fear even factual? I'd like to share a few thoughts with you today. Are you aware that 8.4 million people die in India every year? That's eight times the entire population of the state of Nagaland every year. That's 22,500 people every day. Are you aware that 4.5 lakhs people die from TB every year in India? That's 1,200 people every day. Did you know that 7.2 lakhs people die from diarrhea or dysentery-related diseases in India every year? I'm not talking about the world. I'm talking about India. Not to mention, not to mention this, 1.2. 7 lakhs, almost 1.8 lakhs people die from traffic accidents in India every year. Consider this. In 2018, I don't have I don't have statistics from last year, but in 2018 there were 8.8 lakhs deaths in India due to malnutrition. In other words, a whole lot more people are dying from other causes than a Chinese virus. Meanwhile, as of today, and of course, I know these statistics, uh, you know, they're time bound. It's going to change, you know, in the future. I I understand that. But right now, only something like 4,300 people have died from COVID-19 in India. Presently, there are 1.5 lakhs positive uh, positive cases of COVID-19 in India. But in 2018, there were an estimated 6.7 million cases of malaria in India. And from that, 9,620 people died. And actually... Many estimates put the number much, much higher than that. Friends, do you know that every year throughout the world, now I'm talking about the globe, every year about one billion people 
are infected with the flu. And of these, five million are very serious cases. Did you know that globally, between three lakhs and 6.5 lakhs people die every year from the flu? Did you know that? But you might say, but Pastor, coronavirus is incurable, and so is the common cold. Do you understand that there is no vaccine for the common cold? There's no shot, no antibody that a doctor can give you, and boom, you'll never have a cold again. But it's treatable. It's treatable. Consider this as well. Is your fear factual? Worldwide, COVID-19 has about a 99.7% recovery rate. In India, the vast majority of fatalities from COVID-19, about 63%, occurred with the elderly, 60 years of age and older. The vast majority of the people who die from this disease are elderly. Friends, there is a vast difference between dying from coronavirus and dying with coronavirus. Recently, I read one blog online that indicated that one man from Nagaland died in New Delhi with COVID-19. And then later in the same posting admitted he was a cancer patient undergoing chemotherapy. I'm sure that the Chinese virus contributed to his death. I, I don't deny that. But he didn't die from that virus. He died from cancer. Do you realize seven lakhs people die every year in India from cancer? A whole lot more than are going to die from this Wuhan virus. Friend, is your fear even reasonable? One recent study that I've read, and it's been posted uh, in various locations from reliable sources, one study indicated that one of the best preventions, one of the best treatments against COVID-19 is vitamin D. Vitamin D helps people from getting this Chinese virus. And can you guess where the best source of vitamin D comes from? I'll give you a hint. It's not from sheltering inside. It comes from the sun. It comes from the sun. Every doctor knows fresh air and sunshine is necessary for good health. And especially for children. Statistics indicate, this is not my opinion, statistics indicate that children worldwide are not, I repeat, they are not highly susceptible to COVID-19. The number of children ages 12 and under who have COVID-19 is a very minuscule percentage. And yet, the schools remain closed. Almost an entire academic year has been lost. Sheltering inside, away from the sunshine and fresh air, this is actually medically the wrong thing to do. Are you listening to me? Mark Siegel, an associate professor of medicine at New York University Medical Center, said recently, lockdowns don't work. Now, friends, 
I'm certainly not saying that the pandemic is not real or that it's not an issue to be dealt with. I, I know that. And please do not misunderstand what I'm saying. I am not unsympathetic toward those who are suffering or have suffered or those who have lost a loved one. Please do not misinterpret what I'm saying. My heart especially goes out toward the untold number of migrant workers who have died because of this lockdown. And I am equally concerned for the multitudes in the millions who have lost their livelihood because of this draconian decision. It's easy for those who are collecting a government salary to be complacent. For them, this is only a minor inconvenience. But for countless millions this is a disaster. They have nothing. It is time to choose faith over fear. In the final analysis, either we believe the Bible or we don't. If the Bible is not true, then there's no reason for us to study it. There's no reason for us to print it, publish it, or make it available. If the Bible is true, then there's no reason for us to ignore it. And for those who seem to believe that what I'm saying is foolish, ridiculous, out of touch, I would like to quote one more verse. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 Verse 18 and 19. Let no one deceive himself. If anyone among you thinks that he is wise in this age, let him become a fool that he may become wise. Why? For the wisdom of this world is folly with God. If you follow the wisdom of God's word, the world will say you are foolish. But if you ignore the wisdom of God's word and follow the wisdom of this fallen world, God will say you are foolish. So that means today somebody's going to call you a fool. Let it not be God. Amen. Jesus entered into Jairus' house and he worked a miracle. The girl was raised up. And he can do the same thing in your home as well. So today I want to pray for you, no matter who you are, wherever you are, I want to pray for you. And this is my word to you. This is God's word to you. Do not fear. Only believe. Thank you.